from the capital city of Charleston, West Virginia, this is Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. Inside West Virginia Politics is brought to you by AARP West Virginia, your ally for real possibilities in the Mountain State. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Inside West Virginia Politics. I'm your host, Mark Curtis. My co-host, Adrian Robbins, will be with us shortly. You know, we are now less than a month away from the start of the annual legislative session here in West Virginia, and we want to talk about what they're going to be talking about. Joining me this morning is Dale Lee. He is the president of the uh, West Virginia Education Association. Good to have you on the program, uh, Dale. You know, it occurs to me the last two years, the last two legislative sessions were really dominated by education issues and, of course, the teachers teacher strike. Um, I don't know if we're going to see that again this year, but let's talk about first what your priorities are in terms of educational initiatives and bills you hope to see in the legislature this year. Well, the, the main thing that we have to look at is finding a, a consistent, dedicated funding source for PEI. We, uh, this past few weeks, we've seen the finance board adopt a plan that's not going to show any increases for PEI for the next uh, year. But we have to look at a funding source beyond that because in the second, third, fourth year out, you're looking at some major amount of money. And that was the task force recommendation is that you dedicate a funding source to that. We have to fulfill that. Well, let's talk about uh, money in the budget because last year the, the state wound up taking in uh, over a half a billion dollars more in unanticipated revenue. But then again, this year we're on the, the, you know, the West Virginia roller coaster ride. The latest numbers from the governor's office show a $40 million deficit. Last time we saw big deficits in the state, there had to be cuts across the board. Even education took a hit. What are your concerns about this budget deficit and what it may mean to schools and the kids. Well, our major concern is that we we made some strides with uh, uh, the social, emotional feelings of the kids this past year by putting additional money into the professional support people. We can't go backwards now. We've we've taken a step forward to help our students. We can't take that step backwards. Uh, and you know, we we just have to stop giving money away. You know, and, and one of the things I want to talk about, it, and it, it makes the big headlines, the teachers and all state employees got 5% raises mm -hmm. each of the last two years. And some folks probably look at that and say, wow, that's 10% over two years, that'll fix the problem. Where are we now with the disparity in teacher pay, especially to our surrounding states, which all pay more than West Virginia does? We're still far below our surrounding states. We're anywhere from uh, $4,000 to $20,000 less than the contiguous states, depending on what area you're at like uh, the Pennsylvania, Maryland, uh, Loudoun County, Virginia area in the Eastern Panhandle. We still have a, a huge number of positions that don't have a certified teacher in them. We still have trouble re uh, retaining qualified teachers. So we're, we're not making the strides that we need to make. In addition to getting the salaries competitive, we also have to put the respect back in, in education. We have to, uh, particularly the legislature, has to show some respect back to the education profession. What, in speaking of that respect issue, what do teachers need in the classroom? What do they need from the legislature that maybe they didn't get in the massive education bill last year? Well, when, when you continue to talk about how terrible our schools are and how terrible we're doing, uh, like, like uh, Senate President Carmichael continues to talk about the, the NAEP scores without taking into account the high number of poverty kids that we test and those types of issues, you're showing disrespect to the profession. Our educators are doing a great job across the, the state. We, we need to help them along by looking at things like class size. We need to help them along by uh, getting even more uh, support for the professional support professionals with counseling and uh, social workers and those types of things, nurses. One thing you and I talked about this week in a story was the Underwood Smith Scholarship Program, mm -hmm. giving up to $10,000 a year for four years of college, grand total of 40,000 bucks. I listened in math class <laughs> when I was in school. I know you're a math teacher. Right. Um, but in there are 25 scholarships available. That, right. that is designed to attract teachers from within West Virginia and from without. Is, is it good enough or do we need more stuff well, like that? We, we need to continue that. We need to make that even more and, and in addition to giving uh, tuition waivers and things like that, we need to look at some living expenses for these kids. You have kids that, uh, particularly in southern West Virginia, where they could want to go to college and they just can't afford 
they, even if you give them free tuition, they can't afford the living cost of, of going on to college. We should mention this is uh, for high school students who are about to graduate or who have already graduated. If you want more information on how to apply for the scholarships, go to teachinwv.org. We want to thank Dale Lee, president of the West Virginia Education Association, for joining us. I promise as the session gets underway, we're going to have you back on the program, Dale. All right. Thank you for having me. All right. Thanks. And we will have more of Inside West Virginia Politics after this break.